This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Cerebral Cinema and the WON Radio Network present to you Superwoman. Yes, Superwoman, the dynamic crime fighter. Superwoman, the champion of justice. Superwoman, who in truth is mild-mannered Chicago news reporter Emily Nesbacher. Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan, brought to you by Del Monte Foods, the brand preferred by more women than any other line of canned fruits and vegetables in the world. Not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, High Pressure. I'd shut up the tambourine about 11 that night. The help were all gone, and I just piled into bed in my room upstairs for some extra sleep till the roar of motor cars coming down the street way too fast sent me bouncing out. I looked out the open window as two identical sedans break to a stop directly in front of the tambourine. The doors flew open, a dozen uniformed men scrambled out, and one of them started barking orders. Two, three, to the back door. The rest around the building. Quick, count down and in the escape. I was already throwing on a robe when a big slamming opened up at the front door. I got down in a hurry. All right, cut the racket. I'll get there. Yeah, what's it about? Put on your clothes, Mr. Jordan. You come with us. Takes a warrant, Buster. As you wish. Read that quickly. Foreign ministry. Precisely. Now your cross. Look, a phone call would have got me there. Why the middle of the night? The armed guard. At once, Mr. Joran. The Egyptian government does not like to be kept waiting. A couple of minutes later, they had me in the back seat of the lead car. All my questions met with stony silence. Whatever it was about, they were making it look big. Reaching the governmental center, the car slowed and soon rolled up to the big foreign ministry building. I was taken out and inside. With two ahead and two behind me, they marched me down a vaulted, marble-floored corridor that seemed a block long. At the far end, they ushered me through a door and into a small anteroom. They left me there, the door lock snapping behind them, and I got the full treatment. I sat cooling my heels for a full hour. Then the door to the inner office suddenly opened. A guard beckoned, and I went in. Seated behind the biggest desk I ever saw was a spectacled Egyptian official. The plate on the desk said... Herod Bay. Mr. Jordan, some years ago you very suddenly left the United States. Why? Personal reasons. They don't concern your government. Following a brief tenure in Istanbul, you came to Cairo. Again, I ask why. To open a cafe. And for what other purpose? That's all, Herod Bay. Now you tell me why I'm dragged out of bed and then keep cooling my heels here all hours of the night. I demand an explanation. Mr. Jordan... You are in no position to demand anything. We'll see what the American consul has to say about that. If you wish. They, of course, are in full possession of the facts. Facts about what? To get on. Naturally, I'm reluctant to discuss either your past or your present. So now we will get to your future. You got something to say about my future? Very great deal. First, I will explain that the relations between your government and mine are most amicable. Otherwise, we would not be so lenient. What are you getting at? In this envelope, Mr. Jordan, is a one-way air flight ticket to New York City. A TWA plane leaves the Cairo airport at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. 
I suggest that you be on it. Let me get this straight here at bay. Might understand I'm being kicked out of Egypt. Your visa and residence permit are cancelled. What about my possessions, the tambourine? Confiscated. Except for $50 American, which you are permitted to take with you. Look, maybe you think it's all settled, but I don't. Not till I know why. You would be wise, Mr. Jordan, not to test your good fortune. That is all, then. You have just 36 hours to get out of Egypt. Here Aunt Bay pressed a buzzer that brought the guards and he ordered me taken out and released. Outside on the dark street, I took a deep breath and tried to make some sense out of it. I had 36 hours and I could see the American consul in the morning. So I took another course right to the home of Captain Sam Sabaya. I banged on the knocker till a light came on and the door was open. It was Sam's wife, and when she saw who it was, she quickly retired. I waited till Sam appeared, carefully adjusting his night robe and fez. He came out with me into the court. Ya salam alaykum, Jordan. I'm sorry to wake you up, Sam, but it couldn't wait. So now you come to me. I had to. Something's happened. I just had a long session with Herod Bay of the foreign minister. If your business is with him, why come to me? Because my visa's been canceled. He gave me just 36 hours to get out of Egypt. You've got to help me, Sam. You suggest that I, only a police captain, should attempt to influence the decisions of the Egyptian government? Well, you can do something, get information, find out what it's all about. What it is about? You are telling me you do not know? I don't, Sam. I haven't the slightest idea, believe me. Enough of this, Jordan. There is an old saying of my people. Without trust, all understanding is futile. Make that clear, will you? Many times we have not seen eye to eye. Many times I have found it most difficult to justify your actions. But you've always given me the benefit of the doubt. At this time there is no doubt. With the foreign office, with me, or with you. Oh, that means you already know. I regret that I did not know long ago. Jordan, I only wish there was some shred of evidence in your behalf. I see none. What is it, Sam? What can I do? Do only as you are told. Be on the plane for New York tomorrow. Now I return to my bed. No, not yet, Sam. Not till you tell me everything. Farewell, Jordan. Allah be with you. Then I was staring at another closed door. Sam knew what it was about. And both he and Herod Bay seemed to think I should know, too. Well, there was nothing to do but go back to the tambourine and wait it out till morning. I let myself in the front way and took the balcony steps up to my room. I opened the door and the smell of strong tobacco smoke came out. I snapped on the light. Seated calmly with his chair leaned to the wall was a stocky man with a hawk nose, black stubble beard, and he was knocking his pipe against the heel of his shoe. Insomnia, Mr. Jordan? How'd you get in here? Surely you have questions of greater interest. Then supposing you start answering them. Who are you? (laughs) I'm Emil Karayan. The new Cairo representative for certain lines of farm machinery. Uh, from where? <laughs> that depends on what nation can best afford me. Uh, then the machinery line's just a front, huh? What is your racket? Why are you here? I have come, Mr. Jordan, to help you remain in Cairo. Oh, it had to fit. You know the answer to what happened to me at the foreign office, eh? <laughs> quite so, quite. Everything moves according to plan. Your plan, Mr. Karayan? And my associates, uh, permit me. Until two days ago, a group of international agents were operating in Cairo. Their work, of course, was to obtain secret information for sale to whatever countries wish to buy. In other words, a spy ring. You may call it what you like. When the authorities began closing in, my friends made a hasty escape from Egypt. However, they first planted in the files of their Cairo headquarters a, shall we say, number of interesting documents. How does all this concern me? The documents were later found by the police. They all give conclusive evidence that you, Rocky Jordan, have been employed in espionage activities since first coming to Cairo. A complete account of your operations, how much you were paid. Oh, so that's a setup. Why pick me? (laughs) Very wise choice, I believe. An American citizen, one with a past not clearly explained, one who can be... Used for our purpose. It's all clear, Karan. You'll tell the rest of the police. No, closer, Jordan. I did not think that I would come unarmed. All right, your gun holds the cards. 
It will be necessary only long enough for your head to cool. Jordan, consider your position. You've done all that for me. We are quite thorough, yes. Now, as I say, Jordan, I came to offer you a way out. Yeah, go on. We carry on where the others left off. Should we choose, it would be very simple for us to prove to the foreign ministry that the incriminating documents were all forged. That you are completely innocent. Yeah? And for that little favor, what do I do? I'm so glad that you understand. Mr. Jordan, you are going to a party. Oh, am I? A very exclusive party. Here is your engraved invitation. It admits you to a houseboat on the Nile at the foot of the Sharia Humar. Mm -hmm. When do I go? At once. When you arrive, you will approach your hostess, compliment her on her beauty, and say that the cherry cordial is delicious. She will then give you your orders. If I accept the invitation. You have no choice. Have you, Mr. Jordan? So I went to that houseboat at the foot of the Sharia Humar. There was plenty more to learn, and this was a good place to start. It was three o'clock in the morning when I got there, but the houseboat was all lit up with lots of people of various nationalities around. The invitation got me in. I hung around the canopy table till I spotted the hostess, and then I wandered over. I could see calling her beautiful was going to be easy. She was tall and not too slender. Her black hair was pulled back to a knot at the nape of her neck, above open shoulders. Hello? I'm uh, sorry I'm so late. You are late. I've been waiting for someone like you for a long time. May I say uh, you're very beautiful tonight? Well, you're very kind. Is there more you would like to tell me? Well, I haven't seen any around, but they tell me the cherry cordial's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Your sense of humor, Mr. Jordan. Oh, yes, I've had a lot of laughs tonight. Oh, you must tell me about them. Shall we go where we can talk? Whatever you say. You are Rocky Jordan. That's right, lady. Who sent you here? Emil Karayan. Then it is all settled. <laughs> it's what he says. Good. Do only as I say, and you may remain in Cairo as long as you like. You have my promise, Rocky. Tell me all about it, huh? Oh, there is no hurry now. Sit down, Rocky. Thank you. You know, when I call a woman beautiful, I uh, like to know her name. For the purposes of my stay in Cairo, it will be Tanya Malnick. Do you like it? <laughs> it's as phony as you are. All right, Mr. Jordan. We keep it on an impersonal basis as you wish. My orders, Miss Malnick. Very well. Geologists working for the government of Egypt have located what is believed to be fabulously rich oil deposits somewhere in Egypt. Mm -hmm. This is a top secret. Egypt does not wish other countries fighting over those fields at her expense. She prefers to leave them untouched as security for defense. You're telling me quite a lot. A client of ours wishes to know the location of those fields, also their extent and value. And that's all I have to find out for you. There are others in Cairo intent on this information. With your help, we will get it first. You know, I got enough now. Do not be stupid, Mr. Jordan. I'll see you around, Tanya. Put back into the room, Yankee. Well done, Putar. Close the door now. Yes. Now I watch close the Yankee. Mr. Jordan, you will remain here as my guest until tomorrow night. Till after my plane leaves. That's your plan, too? Hold him here, Futar. If he gets troublesome, do what is necessary. I do it with pleasure, what is necessary. And now I must return to my guests, but have them ready for tomorrow night. Mr. Jordan has important work to do. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Question, how do you make a good hamburger into a superb hamburger? Answer, with Del Monte catsup. Yes, with Del Monte catsup, of course. That zesty, lively catsup that gives you real tomato flavor at its best. It's all you need to make that hamburger taste just right. And Del Monte catsup is wonderful on any food that calls for catsup. Chops, meatloaf, stew... That's right, ladies. There'll be plenty of calls for second helpings when you have Del Monte catsup on your table. 
You see, it's the only catsup made with pineapple vinegar, that superlative vinegar that brings out all the best tomato flavor in catsup. The rich tomato flavor of this fine catsup adds a sparkling zest, just right for hearty appetites. Keep a bottle always handy on the table. On beans, it's fine. On steaks, it can't be beat. Yes, on any food that calls for catsup, Del Monte catsup is a real flavor treat. Once you've tried it, you'll never be without it. And you'll be surprised at its low cost, less than many other quality brands. And now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, High Pressure. Well, under Futar's watchful eye, I sat it out on Tanya's houseboat that night and all the next day. I had plenty of time to think things over. Tanya and Karan alone could clear my name in Egypt and get my freedom. Something else loomed even more important. Rich oil lands, the greed of other nations, and the safety of Egypt. Tanya's plans were laid well, and I knew if I didn't get the information for her, somebody else would. So all I could do was take orders and then somehow see that the information got back into proper hands. About nine that night, Tanya came to the door and waved Futar out. Are you ready, Mr. Jordan? Maybe. You know the terms. What about your end of the bargain? I have only to call the foreign ministry and direct them to certain facts. Your visa will be restored within an hour. Well, there's the phone. After you have returned. There is little time left. All right, what do I do? You will leave the houseboat alone and go directly to the corner of Sharia Solomon Pasha and Sharia Nagal. Uh -huh. Parked there will be an ordinary maintenance truck. There are identification papers lying on the seat. The keys are there. Drive to the service entrance of the defense building. Park there and go in. Uh, nobody stops me? They expect someone else. I can guess what happened to him. Go inside. Take the stairs to the third floor. Stop in front of door 371. Light a cigarette. Throw the match on the floor. 371. Mm -hmm. What then? You'll be handed a folio. Bring it here to me. Do you understand? Yeah, sure. I call off your strong boy and I'll be going. The way is clear. Oh, one more thing, Mr. Jordan. Yeah. Under no conditions do you contact or talk to anyone. Fail in that, and you need never worry about leaving Egypt. You will hardly be able to go anywhere. And I was on my way, willing to carry out her orders up to a point. I left the houseboat, and then I was alone. I'd walked maybe a block along the dark Nile docks when a small shadow wearing a derby hat hopped in my way. Mr. Jordan... Hmm? Mr. Jordan. What you do? Come out of a hole? Shh. Behind the crates on the dock. Come, quickly. He was a new element, and I couldn't pass up any bets. So I followed him behind the stack of crates near the dock's edge. He was suddenly talking again. Here, Mr. Jordan. Quickly, now. We are not safe. Did you ever try a gargle? Shh. You are on your way to the defense building. Everything is set. Who are you working for? Not for Tanya. You see, I, too, have a client. One willing to pay much more for the information. Much more. Name your price. I got a deal. What's yours? Bring the folio to me here. And I will pay. <gasps> Stand away from him, Jordan. Karayan. No, no. No. Ankle back up. A little further. No. No, Karayan. Please. So you see now, Jordan, how well you are covered. If you do not wish to join the unfortunate Henkel, get on with your work. Karayan didn't have to tell me again. I moved off the dock and up the hill. Just before I reached Sharia Solomon Pasha, I spotted an empty phone booth and decided to make a quick try for help. Police headquarters, Captain Sabaya speaking. Do not answer, Yankee. Hello? Hello, hello, who is this? Hello, speak up. Hang up the phone. You should know better, Yankee. Do not try again. <laughs> I moved on. So Fatah was covering me, too. Now, the truck was waiting where Tanya had said. I got in, drove to the rear of the defense building, and parked. A man at the door glanced at my papers and waved me in. I took the stairs to the third floor and walked to door 371 and stopped. 
The scrub woman was on the floor, hard at work. I lit a cigarette, threw the match down in front of her. Without looking up, she pulled a folio out from somewhere, tossed it to me, and went on scrubbing. I pocketed the folio, went down the steps and out of the building. It was all that easy. I drove the truck a few blocks away, then down a dark, deserted street and stopped. Then I had the folio out of my pocket and opened. Inside, I found just two sheets of paper. I struck a match, intending to burn them right there. And that's when I got a surprise. There were nothing but white blank sheets of paper. There wasn't a thing on them. I was wondering who double-crossed who when a knife point scratched the back of my neck. Now put the sheets of paper carefully back into the folio. You uh, want to see him? The knife commands. Uh, anything you say, Futar. Here you are. Place the folio back in your pocket. Then turn the truck toward the Nile. The beautiful Tanya waits most anxiously. I took off the brake and rolled onto the Sharia Humar. Two blocks up from the river, Futar ordered me to stop. We got out and walked the rest of the way to the houseboat. Tanya was there, and so was Emil Karayan. With Futar close behind, they ushered me back into the room where I'd been held prisoner. I handed them the folder and watched for the expression on their faces as they drew out the sheets of paper. Uh, was it all worth it? Worth it, Rocky? It seems, Jordan, that you have already looked at the papers. We suspected that you would. Oh, yeah. You set up a wild deal, send me scratching around Cairo with a knife boy on my tail. You even kill a man. What do you draw? <laughs> Nothing but blanks. <laughs> you are quite new at this, are you not, Rocky? <laughs> Shall we show him, Tanya? Oh, by all means, Emil. Hold the papers under the lamp. Uh, now, the switch. Uh... You see, Rocky? Under the ultraviolet rays, lines suddenly appear. Uh, excellent, Tanya. Excellent. The map. The location of the oil fields, the complete findings of the geologist. Excellent. Well, Rocky. Yeah, you win, Tanya. Oh, do not be so dejected. You have done your work well. Yeah, mission accomplished. For which we pay you with your freedom. The foreign ministry at this moment has the information that exonerates you. You'll be permitted to remain in Cairo. So you see, everything has worked out quite well. Yeah, well, thanks for everything. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, wait, Rocky. You have not heard your next assignment. Just what does that mean? That you didn't clear me at all? Please, are you so naive as to think that you are finished so easily? It's over, Tanya. The pressure's oh. off. Oh, surely you must realize that taking secret information from the government building is a crime against Egypt. You are a spy now, Rocky. I would regret to have to tell them what you have just done. Yeah. Your first assignment was quite small, but now we will go on to greater things. It is good to have you with us, Rocky. Is it not, Emil? Oh, most excellent accomplice, my dear Tanya. Stubborn, persistent, daring, intuitive. I stood there, suddenly seeing the whole pattern. The trap was sprung and there wasn't a thing I could do. That's when my eye caught the door behind them silently opening. And there, ringing wet, stood the little shadow Emil Karayan thought he'd killed. He was sagging but alive, and he held a gun. To the side, Mr. Jordan. To the side. Uncle. Emil, Futa, get him. Stop. Do not touch the papers. I will have them. So it appears I should have shot twice. You sought death, Karayan. Now, you shall have it. My mind was on Tanya, my key witness, and I grabbed her, yanking her from the line of fire. Henkel raised the gun. I saw his effort to squeeze the trigger. His legs buckled as he fired. The shot was wild, and Henkel fell, fully spent, the gun rolling from his hand. Ryan and Futar died for it, so did I. My foot kicked it away, then I was up with the gun. That's when everything stopped. Ryan's hand, halfway to his pocket, Futar's knife held in midair. Are you quite through now, Jordan? I turned... There, framed in the doorway, eyeing me with something like approval, stood Captain Sam Sabaya, Cairo Police. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. Some like it cold, some like it hot. Any way you serve it, it really hits the spot. <laughs> what kind of rhyme is that? And anyway, what does it all have to do with Del Monte? Just this. A chilled glass of Del Monte tomato juice is a wonderful dinnertime appetizer. We all know that. But here's a tip. Del Monte tomato juice served 
piping hot is mighty fine these nippy days, too. Del Monte tomato juice served hot? Say, that's a good idea. Yes, it's a wonderful warm-up drink in the morning. And the fresh, natural taste of Del Monte tomato juice is so refreshing. It has a just right tang, a rich, sunny flavor you find only in fully vine-ripened tomatoes. And those are the only tomatoes Del Monte uses, red, field-ripened, flavorful tomatoes. So remember, hot or cold, Del Monte tomato juice is tomato flavor at its best. First thing in the morning, any time during the day, as a mealtime appetizer, Del Monte tomato juice really hits the spot. Buy several cans. You'll find them useful in so many ways. Back now to Rocky Jordan for the conclusion of tonight's story. Well, Sam picked up the stolen papers and I got on the phone for an ambulance to come and pick up the luckless Mr. Henkel. It looked like he was due for a long term in the prison hospital. Then with Tanya, Karayan, and Futar in tow, we went down to headquarters. Then Sam invited me into his office for coffee. I had the coffee made especially strong, Jordan. I thought you might need it. Mm, nice, Sam. <coughs> See what you mean. <laughs> Jordan, even for one who places great value on duty, an apology is sometimes difficult. Oh, no, skip it, Sam. I'm wondering how you got to the houseboat. First, may I confess now that your frantic visit to my home last night left me troubled. I didn't think I convinced you. Your distress seemed most genuine. Too genuine to be an act. Yeah, but like you said, your hands were tied. Yes, indeed they were. My mind was on you tonight when a mysterious phone call came to my office. I caught only one word, Yankee, before someone hung up. Uh, that was my call, Sam. Futar cut it off. It was not much to go on, but I sent out word to my force to watch for you. Several officers were investigating at the river following a report of a gunshot there. Uh, that's when Karayan thought he killed little Henkel. They were still around when they saw you and Futar enter the houseboat. They called me immediately, and I got there as soon as possible. Now, what about me, Sam? Oh, have no fears, Jordan. You will receive a formal apology from my government in due time. Well, you forget one thing. So? I actually took secret information out of a government building. That carries quite a penalty. Yes, but under the strongest coercion. There is no doubt that you acted in the best interests of my country. <laughs> Thanks. Now, where does it go from here? Uh, what, Jordan? Everything. You got Tanya, Karine, Henkel. What good's that? Plenty more will move in to take their places. Mm. As you say, it is a never-ending struggle between people and nations. Doesn't leave much to hope for, does it? Mm, there is much to hope for. We who live in what is called an ancient land know that the world is still young. The good will come. Well, I'll try to sleep on that, Sam. <laughs> You see, Jordan, even you have hope. Hope that sometime you will get a full night's sleep. For the finest in tomato flavor, enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomatoes. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station, and the story is The Notorious Mr. Marco. For a wonderful, quick, and thrifty dessert, try Del Monte peaches. The best liked peaches in the whole wide world. Sliced or halved, served any way you like. They're delicious. Del Monte peaches, the brand that always puts flavor first.
Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.